Welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and today I'm joined by my colleague, Uning Liu, who's an application specialist here at the company. Today, Uning will be talking to us about what values we can grid in a point cloud. All right, Uning, take it away. In Global Mapper, we do have a tool to generate a raster type of data based on the attribute that the point clouds contain. One of the most commonly used values is elevation. Um, we use the elevation grid tool to generate terrain model like DSM, DTM from the point cloud data sets. That is why you would usually call generate elevation grid tool, but really it can actually do more. The grid type section in this tool is where the users are able to specify the attribute that should be used for point cloud rasterization. As long as the point cloud data is loaded and the attribute is recorded for those points. For example, like intensity value, RGB value, near infrared values, and also number of points per uh, cell. Now take a look at our data sets. It's in Memphis City near the Mississippi River in uh, Tennessee. When colored by elevation, we can roughly estimate the, where the water body is, the bridge, and some buildings on the ground. However, to be clearly distinguish the feature of the built-in environments, where the trees are, uh, how spread it is, uh, what the building and the road structure looks like. Moreover, to recognize clear boundary to define the water body, we may need an intensity image. The intensity value is the integer representation of the pulse return magnitude. Higher value uh, means more return energy. In Global Mapper, there are multiple ways to color point clouds, one of which is color LiDAR by intensity. But what we really would like to do is to get an intensity raster as input to cooperate with other raster image analysis tool later. So we still need that uh, grid uh, creation uh, tools. But for the grid type section, change it from elevation to intensity value. For, uh, grid, for raster output, there are two options, either grid or image. For grid method, we ask Global Mapper to determine what statistic number should be used to represent the value for each cell. For bin size, same as resolution, we take one feet of uh, one foot, uh, which is slightly larger than the point facing for our LiDAR data sets. Now the intensity grid is generated. The black parts have less energy returned because uh, intensity varies from surface composition, scan angle, the degree to absorb light. We can clearly see, for example, we used our zoom tool. We can see the road markings and the water body between the water surface and the land. On um, this uh, intensity grid generated from our point clouds could be quite useful, especially if you do not have aerial image overlapping on your point cloud data. We can do more accurate digitizing on top of our intensity data. So right now we are using the digitizer tool to digitize trees uh, feature as point and residential roads as lines. In the end, you may export the raster layers in a compatible grid or image format Global Mapper supports by right-clicking layer and go to export and select the compatible files you would like to uh, store on your machine. So now in this case, we store it as ECW file format. Say now I use our online data connection tool to stream a word image within this bound so that we can rest, uh, rasterize our point clouds based on RGB value and generate multiple single band layers. But to do that, first we need to uh, one of our LiDAR tools, apply colors to point clouds. We select the loaded point cloud layer and then the loaded image layer, select to update the RGB color. So now we can see that Global Mapper is coloring our LiDAR, trying to create an RGB attribute for each point. 
So now, oh, by uh, by viewing in three D view in the three D viewer, we can see uh, clearly that all the point clouds are colored, so they are uh, st storing attribute for RGB value. So, for example, you can see the water, the bridge, and the trees in the three D uh, viewers. With the feature info tool, you can see uh. RGB values have also been added to corresponding points as attributes. But to create a single band raster image that, representing, uh, re that represents RGB, we will use the generate uh, grid tool again. Now for grid type, we select red and set output as image and set uh, one foot in the resolution uh, as before. You can reproduce the workflows and generate other two single bands imaging uh, image uh, for uh, like green channel and the blue channel. So same, we can export to image files and store them on our local machine by exporting them. Also, we, uh, Global Mapper has a new tool in 24.1 version uh, that allows users to create a multi-band uh, layer from several single band layer. We can open after uh, the image are uh, after the image is generated. We can open the raster options dialog to adjust the band setup. and also the contrast uh, adjustment. So now our multi-band RGB image is generated from our point cloud data sets. Now we can utilize it for further image analysis. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Uning, about gridding values in a point cloud. I know that our users will find it very useful. To learn more about Global Mapper or Global Mapper Pro, please visit bluemarblegeo.com today. And as always, thank you so much for joining us for Ask the Experts, and we hope to see you next time.